Real Talk Monday, showing up, episode 96 of the Do Hard Things Today podcast. All right, Jed, we're starting something new on Mondays. Mondays, get your that gets your week going. That's kind of when you kickstart and you sometimes you need a little extra motivation. And there's been a lot of things out there that are called motivation Mondays and those kind of things. And 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 I think some of those can be can be lame. What we're going to bring you every single Monday is going to be something called Real Talk Monday. And we just want to give you a disclaimer and a little warning. If you get your feelings hurt easily, or if you just don't like to have have truth spit at you, so to say, this these podcasts will probably be ones you just want to skip over until you're ready at that point to hear the truth and then then come back and, and listen to them. So we're going to bring you some short 10-minute or less podcast on Mondays, and we're calling them Real Talk Monday, and this one's called Showing Up. Despite the circumstances, I will show up. This is something that, that I, have, I have tried to implement into my life in, in everything that I do, whether it be business, family, uh, whatever, whatever it, it may be, is despite the circumstances, I will show up. You know, Jed, this is something over the last couple of years that has been been reality to all of us. You know, we've yeah. I mean, you go back two, two and a half years, we've all kind of been through some stuff that we never thought we would experience uh, before. Yeah, and, and I saw something the other day that kind of speaks to to showing up, and it said, "To this point, you have woken up every day." Yes, yes. I mean that that is that that right there is so much. That sounds like a silly statement yeah. on the surface, but when you really think about it, yeah, when it, you think about it, it is. I have survived everything that has happened to me up to this point in my life, right? And that does not mean has not been hard. We're not minimizing anything. We're not. We're not saying that that we're going to talk about some of these points about bad things and unfairness and those those type of things. But up to this point, you're here, and and you have the opportunity now to anything you encounter, no matter what happens to me. I'm going to continue to show up. So I'm just going to give you five things. Number one, this is a question that you want to ask yourself. And, and I ask people this question a lot of times. And, and whenever I start feeling sorry for myself or start getting frustrated, it is usually because this script has flipped. So, so listen to this question, and I want you to think about it. Are you characterized by things always happening to you, or do you wake up and happen to things. Now, Jen, I want you to think about the difference in that. Of yeah. if you just kind, of, if you kind of go through life without a plan, stuff's always coming at you. It's always hitting you. It's always stuff just happened. Oh, this isn't fair. Whatever. You've either got that side, or you're characterized as being someone that I'm in control of my day, and I'm going in into it with purpose, and I am happening to things. You see the difference there? I do. There was a Sopranos episode called The Happy Wanderer, hmm. and the main character kind of explored these points. He was that force of nature who woke up and happened to things, and he couldn't stand to see somebody just drifting through the day. Yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's a huge difference between the two of them. Yeah. Yeah, Tony Soprano <laughs> reference on the on fire. That is um, – but that is true, and, and you and, – and, and this can be – People can use it for good. They can use it for bad. Right. But it is – it. sometimes we get caught up and we, we look around and, Jed, days, weeks, and years can go by in our life and we're just like, man, I haven't – I've had no – Yeah, what have I done here? Purpose and direction and, and, and that. So, so, you know, if you're going to show up, you, you've got to wake up with purpose and, and you got to be on point and you've got to be out happening to things. Don't allow the world and circumstances just to happen to you. You even found this during COVID of, you know, we dealt with this in, in business, Jed, where there were, there were people that were like, oh, we're just, this is going to destroy businesses. We're just going to, we're going to shut down. We're, well, what are we going to do? But, and, and granted, we're not minimizing. Dude, it was a scary time. Yeah, I can tell you, yeah. man, I, I, there were times that, that I would come home and I, I would be thinking to my, okay, what are we going to do? What, what does this look like? What happens if this, but even when those things are going on, you've got to, you got to be strategic about, okay, what can I control? 
What are the things that I can control? And I'm going to control those things. I'm going to focus on those and I'm going to be, and then you're, then you're able to what it's almost like magic. What happens is when you do that, things, good things happen. And then some people will look around and say, like, well, they just, you know, they got lucky or, or just good things happen to, to them. Right. Well, generally good things are happening to you. I remember Michael Jordan, you say about luck. It's like, you know, in one of, um, what's the, what's the documentary? Last dance. Yeah. The last dance. Yeah. He, he, they were asking him about how much did luck play. And he said, Oh, he said, you, he said, everybody gets, gets lucky. He said, but you know, that old, old thing. He said, but man, he said, harder I work, the luckier I get. Yep. And, and that's, that is so true. So if you want, if you want some luck in your life, work hard and, and be purposeful about what you're, what you're doing. Number two, this is the hardest one to grasp. And especially when you're right in the middle of it, bad stuff happens. Unfair things happen. People let us down. The next two words I, I wrote down are, so what? That stings a little yeah. bit, Jen. Yeah. You know it's coming. How do you react to it? Yeah. I mean, it's, I can promise you this, that, that unfair things are going to happen. Bad stuff, are, it, it's going to happen. I'm not telling you it doesn't hurt. I'm not telling you that it doesn't upset you. I'm not telling But if you allow those things to continue to linger, they will, they'll poison you. Hmm. They'll absolutely poison you. And, and you have got to, again, you, you look up the theme of this, this podcast episode is going to be what can you control? So somebody did something to hurt you. Right. So, Something happens or something unfair happened, something that you don't like happened. Okay. That is what it is. Deal with it. You know, sometimes we have to, we have to grieve. We have to, to, to take a, take a day or two to get our, get our bearings about us. But then your, your, your decision at that point is either I'm, I'm just going to lay here and just suffer or I'm going to pick myself up and I'm going to start walking down the road. And, and that's, that's the hardest one. And, and I can tell you um, personally that, that, you know, you go through some things and they, they, they hit you and it's like some of the, sometimes things hit you and they're, it's like someone standing there with a two by four and they keep hitting you and you're trying to get up and these things just keep hitting you and, and, and they lie to you and they say, they say things to you in your own mind and, and it's hard to get up off the, off the ground from them. But you can, again, what you said. I didn't even know you were going to say that on the pod, mm-hmm. but it made sense. Hey, I, I woke up this morning. Yep. And so, if you woke up this morning, you've got the ability to to overcome. Third thing is who's in charge of you. Who's really in charge of you? And this is one that um, got a little mentor group of of young boys, and they're in elementary school. And I always tell them, and, and one of the first questions I ask them at the beginning of the year is, hey, guys, who's in charge of you in school? And you can imagine that my teacher is, my mean principal, my, you know, my, my mom, my dad, my grandma is. I said, no, guys, none of those people are in charge of you. Now, they may have authority. Right. They may be able to punish you. They may be able to tell. But none of them's in charge of you. You're in charge of you. That's a simple little statement, but but it is crucial to you being the person who's going to be characterized by showing up, and that is you're in charge of you. No matter what happens, no matter what other people do, you are in control of you. Fourth thing is average people give up when the going gets tough. Exceptional people, they don't let the circumstances determine their outcomes. There's a book I've been reading, and it's the book's called "It Takes What It Takes," and he talks about staying neutral. Hmm. And he, he he talks to a lot of athletes, and he does mental training with with them. And and what what he talks about in staying neutral is not letting that bad play affect your next play, where they they just stay neutral and they they realize okay, I'm in control of what happens next and I'm not going to allow these bad things to, to affect what happens next. So 
when when something hits you, and again, these things are going to hit you, it allows you to move past them and then show up again on the next play. And really, I mean, life is just a series of – it's almost like a big game we're in. Right. Where it's just a series of plays, and you have to determine what's going to happen on the next play. And we've all seen those exceptional athletes that are – that are able to overcome that Tiger Woods. He tells the story in his book of how his dad would, when he was a young golfer, that they would be out there playing and Tiger would hit a great shot and his, they would go down and his dad would pick the ball up and throw it over in the behind a tree in the rough. And he would get mad. Well, I don't know. It was like, so what, what are you going to do when your ball's over there? You think your ball's never going to be over there? Right. It's going to be over there. What are you going to do? And and he said it developed a sense with him of being able to to overcome. Well, that's not fair. And then overcome. Well, I made a bad shot. So what do I do next? And you'll see people. I mean, you can see it. Gosh, probably the biggest example of it was. Gosh, I mean the Greg Norman. You know, on his Kinda monumental goes, collapse yeah. in in the Masters, and you saw what happened was every single shot. There's a there's a great documentary on it, and and they analyze what pre shot routine and every and how all that changed. Yep. And every single shot, it got worse and worse, and it was just this collapse because he kept allowing it to compound. And that's what'll happen is something bad happens, and then we we focus on it. And then something else bad happens because we're out of our route. We're not focusing on the next play. It, it's it's funny that you use two golf references because one of the most positive things I've ever heard in my life, um, someone asked Jack Nicholas how he was such a good putter. He said, what do you mean? They said, well, how, how do you make all of these uh, astounding putts? They said, oh, he's, I've never missed one in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. I'm- so... You think about that. Yeah. Yeah. That's you, big time. Yeah. I mean, when you when you step up, what he's saying is when I step up yeah. to putt, I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. Right. And that is hey man. <laughs> have have you ever been on a golf course and you've got I know you would never be be out there playing for a dollar bill or, <laughs> or, ever, or a no. coat. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but if you if you're out there with friends and there's really no pressure, I mean it's four guys out there playing and and the most the most that's on the line is a is a hot dog and a coke right. at the at the turn. But you step up to to a six foot putt and you start thinking in your mind, gosh, I'm gonna miss this. They're gonna laugh at me. I'm on a you know, they're they're pressuring me. It, it comes down to a huge difference between I hope this happens or I'm going to make this happen. Yes. It, it's two, that's a huge, huge gulf between those two things. Oh, a gulf is the right word because it is, if you're hoping, I hope this is going to happen, who's right. in control? Uh, whatever forces yeah. that can keep that from yeah. happening. The gods of golf are in right. control. Of this. No, and, and you will hear that happen. You, you will hear people talk about that. Hey, well, the gods of golf, yeah, or anything, or some, for yeah, that matter, of of of, in, of anything, and then you see people that don't don't do that, where they step up and they are they are confident, yeah, and and they are going to that's you know you start talking about the goats of basketball. It, it's the one thing with Michael Jordan that I have always felt separates him with from everybody else is that guy. He he wanted the ball, and at the end of the game, I can't imagine there being anybody else that you want to put there that he, when he goes out on the floor. Now, he may miss it. He has said, hey, I've missed a lot of right. game-winning shots. He said, but there's not a single one that I didn't go out there and think that I was absolutely going to make. Well, and the reason that that inspired such confidence in people around him, I, I've argued for a long time, is not because he made it. It's what happened when he missed it. Yeah. The way he reacted when he missed it, the way he handled himself, the way he carried it when he missed it, the way the miss drove him to not miss it again. Yeah. Like you're talking about, the reaction to what happened. And you know, the most important piece of what he did after that, I believe, is, okay, he misses one on a Thursday night. What's he, he's, he is, he's thinking about that. He has got in his mind, and he has, he has even said in his mind why – 
you know what? It's probably it, – it, it's not even right that I missed that shot. Right. Tomorrow, when yeah. we're playing again, you better give me that ball. Yeah, I want it again. And I want it again, and I'm going to make it because that's what I do. Right. And and so he was he was characterized by by showing up. And the last thing is, and and Jed, you've heard me say this before, and I I'll say this to my kids, and I actually we we uh, something we say in our business too, in our leadership meetings that we have, and um, we we laugh about it now. And and it's funny I'll hear I'll hear our store manager saying this to to their teams, and this is what it says: stop making excuses, and then. We say, you know what? What are excuses for? Losers. Excuses are for losers. And then everybody gets mad. And this is where some people, <laughs> some of you are getting mad right now and you're emailing in telling us we're mean people. But but listen to the next 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 piece. And listeners, I know you're not losers. Right. And and that's what I say when when to our team as we're as we're talking and things happen. It's like, guys, you're making excuses. And you know who makes excuses? Losers do, and and when I say losers, I'm not call, I'm not making a judgment on a person. I'm I'm thinking that is a if you're a team, literally people that lose. Yeah, people that lose <laughs> right. make excuses. And now look, there there can be legitimate reasons. There there, but people that make excuses generally are going to continue to lose. And if you own it, again, who's in control? And if something happens, hey, this happened. We had this issue. Here's what we've done to correct it. And here's how this is not going to happen again. Cause that that puts you in a different different spot. Michael Jordan misses that shot. Guarantee you he knows why he missed that shot. Yep. He has analyzed it and he said, you know, man, when I was when I went up for it, I I I was I was moving a little bit too forward to what I should have been. That won't happen again. Knowing his mentality, it could have been blocked. Yeah, somebody could have made the most athletic play in the history of their lives, and Jordan still would have made it his fault. Yeah, it still would have been something he did because that hundred percent. Yeah, internalize it and and do better. Yep, hundred percent. So so be be in control, guys. If you're going to show up on this real talk Monday, going into your week. I want you to think about being in control. No excuses. No matter what comes your way, you're focusing on the next play. And just like we end all the podcasts, I think this is very it, it, it's very central to what we're talking about today, though. You know, when we do say do hard things today and tomorrow will take care of itself, it is what that is doing is that is telling you you're in control of today. Don't worry about tomorrow. Yeah, there's nothing. We have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow, mm-hmm. but but we do know how you woke up this morning. You're in control of the day. So, folks, real talk Monday. Get out there and do the hard things today. Tomorrow, will take care of itself. So.